In this video, I'm going to show you the free drum machine plugin Satala in Reaper. So this is a drum machine plugin called Satala. I chose this one because it's free. It works with Windows, Macs, and Linux, and it couldn't be simpler to use. So it's a great way to get started with your first productions. So let's take a look. When you go to their website, it looks like this. Like I said, a very simple drum machine plugin. And we can go right here and download the installer. And after we install it, we could open up Reaper. Let's create a new track, double click, name it drums, put it in record. Let's set the input to be our MIDI USB MIDI keyboard right here. Now, if I play my keyboard, we can see level over here, letting us know it's working. Now, just so you know, this keyboard down here is not a part of Reaper. It just represents my USB keyboard. So you can see when I'm playing it. So now I'm going to put a plugin on this track. Go to track effects and let's search Satala. And here's that plugin we installed. Double click it. And here's what the plugin looks like. And right down here, we can see all the drum sounds. We got a kick, snare, and so on. And right below it, we can see the keyboard notes that are going to trigger it. We can change the mapping of those notes. If we go up here to the menu, by default, they're set to chromatic keys. We could change it to white keys or general MIDI, or even choose to MIDI learn whatever keys we want. So if I choose my kick and hit a key on my keyboard, it's going to change and be triggered by that key, which is really useful if you have a MIDI controller with drum pads like this, where they might be assigned to some random notes. We can just change it all right here. I'm going to put it back to general MIDI. And then we can trigger these sounds based on the notes down here. Now, as you can tell, this plugin comes with a bunch of sounds, or at least one kit. But we could add our own samples if we want. We can just right click on a pad, load sample, or browse samples from here. But the easiest way to do it in Reaper is to go up here to the view menu and choose Media Explorer. And that opens up this window where we could choose sounds from a hard drive and preview them from here. And if we like one, we can just drag it in and drop it on these pads. And now that sound is going to be triggered when we hit that key. Now we can also adjust or shape each sound using the parameters over here. For example, if we choose the kick, we could adjust the shape right here, which is going to shorten that note or we'll fade it in. And we can do each note differently just by choosing it first. So we do the snare. We can adjust the shape separately from the kick. Notice how it fades in. or cuts short. And we can also tune the samples right here. We can compress them right here to make them hit a bit harder. And we can also change the tone or the EQ right here.
And to reset each parameter, just double click them and they go back to the default. And we could also adjust the volume of each one and also the pan. And we're done tweaking these. We could save it as a kit. Right over here, save kit, save kit as, or add it to the user kits. I already saved a kit that I set up using these sounds and just tweaking these parameters. Let's check it out right here. And it's pretty much the same as the default with a few minor changes. Except I added a sample to this pad and this pad. And they sound like this. It's the same sample, I just tuned them a bit differently. They sounded like this by default. Just one long chord, but I cut them down, adjusted their shape, compression, and tuning to make them sound like this. Just to add some pitch to our drum machine. We don't just have to use drums with this plugin. Any sample will work. Now we could just record a drum part using the USB keyboard down here, but I find it more inspiring to use the MIDI editor as a drum sequencer. Let me show you. Let's close this, turn on snapping in the grid, and let's create a MIDI item. On PC, it's control, and on Mac, it's command, and just draw in a MIDI item. This one's exactly one bar long, but we can do as many bars as you want. Now we should also create a loop. Go up here to the ruler from bar one to bar two, turn on looping down here, turn on the metronome right here, then we can double click it to open up the MIDI editor, and it looks like this. Over on the left here, this is called the piano roll. But for drums or samples, I prefer to change the view. Right over here, click this one, and it changes to named notes. Notice the samples show their names. Our kick, snare, and so on, making it easier to see what notes we're drawing in. Change the size of our notes right here. Let's start with sixteenths. And let's draw in a part. I like to start with the snare and put some hits on beat two and beat four. So I'll just draw it in right here by dragging, bring the volume up right here all the way, and do the same on beat four. Let's hear it. Then let's add in a hand clap right here. Now for the hi-hat, I'm gonna hold down some modifiers so we can paint in the notes. Control Alt on the PC or Command Option on the Mac. And just draw on the closed hi-hat like this. That's gonna give us perfect 16th notes. Now I want to replace some of these notes with an open hat. So let's move this one up here. And do the same with this one and this one. Just to change it up a bit. Next I want to change the 16th hi-hat part to add in some 32nd notes. So I'm going to change the grid down here to 32nd notes, right click over here to select all those hi-hats, and let's trim them to make them smaller. They're still going to sound the same, but now we can add in some 32nd notes. Let's try one right here.
And this is one of the reasons I prefer to use the MIDI editor as a drum sequencer, because we can just try out different random things. Double click to delete them. Now let's add in a kick part. Let's switch this back to 16th notes. Notice how easy we could try out different parts. And then finally, I want to add in those chords for some musical notes. Right up here. And what's nice about this is we can reopen our plugin and still retweak the sounds later. Maybe change the pitch of our kick. Or the shape of our snare. or the length of our chords. or keep them longer. So the project in front of me here with a guitar loop and some drums I programmed. And I programmed them to trigger the VST instrument, Satala, which we went through in a previous video. It's a free drum machine plugin that works really well with Reaper. And I've added some custom drum sounds for this drum kit. And I've left these pads blank because I don't need this many drum sounds. Although we could use up to 16 with this method. Let's close this and let's hear what we have. Let's solo the drums and let's see them in the MIDI editor. Double click and we can see the program notes right here. Our kick, snare, hi-hat, open hat, claps, maraca, and clave. Now within this plugin, we can control for each sample, the volume, pan, and a bunch of other parameters. But sometimes we want even more control. And we can get that by sending each sample 
to their own separate track. And to do that, just go up here to the menu and choose audio output and change it from stereo output to 16 channel output, one channel per pad, which creates 16 tracks, one for each pad. And we could delete these tracks because we didn't use these pads. Let's make these bigger and give them a color. So now we have a separate track for each sample in our drum machine, all being sent one sample per track. Let's say we wanted to send two samples or more to the same track. Like the hi-hat, I only need one track for both samples. So we can go to the routing on the main track. We can see all our sends right here. And here are the two hi-hat sample sends. The first one is sending from five and six to this track. And the second one is sending from seven and eight to this track. But we don't need this send. So let's delete it. Let's create a new one going to the first hi-hat track. And that send is right here. So let's send seven and eight to go to the first hi-hat track. So now they're both going to the same track. Let's close this. And now we could delete the open hat track as both hi-hats are going to the first track. Perfect. So let's go to the mixer. And from here, we could adjust all the volumes of each sample separately. And we could also adjust the pans. Let's pan the hi hats a bit to the left and the maracas a bit to the right. But now we could also add completely different effects to each sample. Let's go to the effects on the kick track. Let's go to the Reaper effects and choose the rear comp compressor to compress just the kick. Let's also compress the snare also separately. Let's also add an EQ to the snare using re EQ. Let's hear it. And for the claps, let's add a delay using the re delay plugin. Let's set it to a 16th note with feedback. Let's add some reverb after it. Let's choose reverbate. Let's make the room size a little bigger. Let's hear it in the track. Now, I only like the delay every other time. So let's automate it using bypass. Let's put our track into touch mode and bypass it every other time. That's better. Let's put it back to trim read.
Let's move the envelope to the media lane. And for the Maracas, let's add some reverb to them. Let's hear it. And for the clav, let's add a really big reverb to this. We'll make the room size extra long and bring down the dampening. And if we want to hear what it sounded like before, just put this back to stereo. It sounds a bit flat and sterile to me. After, It sounds a bit more three-dimensional to me. So as you can tell, this is a pretty powerful VST instrument drum machine. And like I said, it's completely free. So it's a very quick way of programming drums and using drum samples in Reaper. So that's pretty much it. That's the free drum machine plugin, Satawa in Reaper. I hope you learned something. Hope you can use it and I'll see you next time. Thanks. Bingo, boys, let's go.